points from Allegretto. Are we doing only open ends, so not four fingers for this one? Um, I thought we were right. So I teach mostly open strings, but it does depend. If you've got a student who is great at string crossing and rubbish with fours, teach fours. If you've got a student who's great at fours and rubbish at string crossing, teach string crossing. Yeah. So sort of flexible. Okay, let's just quickly tune because there's some interesting new A string. Different bow speeds. 
First accents. Good. So that's really what we're doing with the bow speed, isn't it? Is yeah. the accent. We're, you know, if they're not squeezing the bow well enough to get a good sound, then you do want to talk about squeezing the bow. But we're, it's not in the right hand. As long as they've got good contact with the string, you're not teaching do 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 do. You're just teaching, you know, good contact do 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 opening and closing. So it's speed, those accents are not right hand particularly. Are you putting the accents in in review or are you starting out with teaching the accents? Well, I don't really want them to be da, 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 So I would be teaching that bowing from the beginning and then most of the time sort of trying to row back a bit away from having really obvious accents. So the, in fact, it's kind of the refinement that happens in review is actually controlling it to be more subtle rather than more okay. obvious accents. But you know, be guided by your musicianship. Are you enjoying listening to it or do you feel like you're being hammered around the head with a brick? <laughs> Go with which one you prefer. Uh, what else do we have that's new? Kit. Um. Can be brand new or it can be new. Oh, uh, minimum. Uh, yeah, we've had some. Well, not loads. Yes. We just said not new, so then I was like, oh. Um. What about the um, fours? No, we can move the fours. The fours we have had in here. The the oh, the pause? Yes, well done. The pause is new. Uh, we've got, no, it's not new, sorry, we've got a pause in Allegro. The pause is on the note, not on, on the, the yeah. uh, gap between the notes, that is new. Mm -hmm. And also it's on an up bow, so you have to, you know, the, the, the main point of this piece is about controlling your bow, because you've got these little, little, big, little, big, little, big, then you've got this uh, minim, which needs a slow, you know, Big, little, big, little, slow. If you're going to actually play them in there. I'm going to retake. And then on the bar 11. Big, little, big, little, big, slow it down. And then a very slow bow on that. Pause. And then a lead without taking a bow off the string. Either, well, you can take a bow off the strings, but the children will not take them off. So it's up to you whether you teach them to lead that there or you teach them in review. Um, I think it's m more normal to teach the leading in review when they're going to do this for a solo. But they must learn how to lead there, otherwise the pianist will lead them. <laughs> That's not the right way around. We have the G string for the first time. Uh. Yeah. And that means what for the left elbow, Caroline? Yeah, exactly. So check that they can swing the left elbow. You can practice exercises like, well, all the exercises that you do, you can practice on different strings, but you can also practice sort of... Um from page 32 on different strings. You would definitely want to have done twinkles on G, starting on open G and D before you get here. Have you got teach twinkles in G under a leg row? No. So after a leg row, Teach your twinkles in G. And that is presuming that you've been doing them in D already, if you haven't been doing them in D already. 
So long, long ago is the first piece with a D string note in it, yeah? So you want to be doing twinkles for starting on open D from about after O'Come or even during O'Come Little Children. And long, long ago in D prepares them very well for this G1 in allegretto because it's literally the same note and it has the same approach it comes from D1. So maybe write on allegretto, check long, long ago starting on D. Simon, can you say that again? Uh, right next to allegretto, like for your teaching notes, yeah. check that you've done long, long ago in D and listen to it before they play this piece because it's such a great warm-up for that third line. So you teach long, long ago and then straight away afterwards you teach it in D? Or no, you teach it in review mm -hmm. in D, um, oh, like after allegro. Okay. Or during perpetual motion. Perpetual motion often quite, takes quite a long time, so it's nice to have little extras that they can get a credit for during that piece. Long, long ago in D can be something they can get a credit for. Twinkles in G can be something they can get credits for. And that can kind of break up. I've been in perpetual motion this whole half term. Or even this whole term. Mm. Um, so you want these little extra things to just keep them going without actually moving them on too quickly. Did we talk about page 34? Uh, not much. Okay. Do you have teach G major finger pattern instead of this here, one octave at a time at first from page 36? So when you finish perpetual motion, instead of doing which is really hard, I would teach G major scale, lower octave first, upper octave second, and sad go to not roadie. Do you all remember the sad go to not roadie we talked about? Mm -hmm. And then I would leave these finger exercises for later, and sometimes I don't even teach them, I'm afraid. So instead of that, you're doing the G major scale on page 36? Yeah, separately at first, lower octave first, because they know that finger pattern, then the higher octave, and then both together. And sad goes on already. And sometimes uh, Hungarian dance. So this is before teaching on the grass, I think. Yep. Yeah. Or, you know, around the same time. Okay. The thing with the triple layer teaching, which is really a benefit to you all, is that because you're doing things so far in advance for preview, if you realise at the end of a lesson that you haven't done something, you can do it the next lesson, it's not going to throw everything out. Whereas if you're doing everything right up to the last minute, just before you need it, you can think, oh my God, they've just started etudes and I haven't taught them low twos. And etudes has low twos and high twos and all four strings in it, right? So you want to move it, you want to front load, get everything much earlier than when you need it so that you've got time to be flexible about exactly when you introduce it and they've got time to practice it before they need it in a piece. Does that make sense, Kit? Yeah. Does that make sense, Caroline? Yeah, good. Okay, so the boxes I have for allegretto are fast bows and short bows, or bow distribution, it's up to you how you phrase it. The tick boxes I'm talking about. Leading, either now or later, probably later. Tone, and mobile left elbow. And of course, if you have a student who's not playing well in tune yet, you would add intonation as a tick box. But if they always are, you can either, it's up to you and it's up to, you know, you'll, you'll pick it up from the child. You may have a student who needs you to say, your intonation is so wonderful, I'm going to write intonation because I always put that as a box, but I can tick it straight away for you because you're doing so well. Or you might have someone that you say, I don't need to write intonation, do I? Of course you know your intonation is really good. And it will just depend on the maturity of the child, the age of the child, how insecure they are, how much praise they need, whatever. Okay. If you were going to put a practice box into Allegretto, what's it likely to be for children using open strings? 
front line, so hopping from the D to the G. Excellent, starting with the upbeat. Yeah, good. Uh, and remember to hop back as well. So you would, the box would be da 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 probably. Okay. Not just down to the G and then they can't necessarily find D1 again. Yeah. Good. Uh, and if you are teaching a child more fours, what else would you need as a box kit? Um. What are your two major options? working on four fingers. Oh like maybe like beginning. Yeah. Four. the G4 for the open D. The end of bar 10 could be. But if we're thinking about boxes, if you're going to practice the fours, you have D1, 2, 2, 4, 3, that's one bit. Or 3, 1, A, A, 3, sorry. 2, 4, 3, 3, 2, 1. Right, and when you actually analyse what you're practising in those either of those boxes, what do you realise? Two, two, four, three. It's always 2, 4, 3, so it makes no difference. You can just practice, do, 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 do. and then you get the full practice, and you don't need to do, 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 because the difference is later, the difference is not in the actual skill they're practicing. Yeah? So when you've got boxes that seem to be practicing the same thing, don't automatically put a box around every time it comes. Have a look at them. Are they actually practicing the skill in different ways? Like maybe on the opposite. Uh, bow, so the string crossing is going to be different, or is it literally the same? Yeah, obviously the string crossing here doesn't apply because we're not using open strings. Okay, mm -hmm. any questions about allegretto? Good, let's just talk about what you're going to do between allegretto and andantino, before andantino. You're going to check your G major scales from page 36. And you're going to start your preview boxes for etude. So if you imagine you've got this huge mountain piece coming up, which is etude, you want to front load, like I said before. So the preview boxes that you're going to teach, we're going to talk about when we get to etude, but just write down here between those two pieces or in your notes separately, check G major scales and teach the preview boxes in etude. And like I said before, here in the book it says also play twinkle variations starting on G. It's too late. You've already used the G string. Why would you do it now? You need to do it before they have to use the G string in a piece because it's going to be easier for them because they've been playing it since they were four. Or five or six or seven or whatever. Okay, let's play Andantino. We've got eight minutes, let's see if we can get all the teaching points for Andantino done. Are you alright so we can't hear? <laughs> Poor love. Yes. This being so impressive for everyone. <laughs> Understandably. <laughs> okay, so beautiful feet positions, soft knees, best bow holds. Lovely upright violin positions. Just scoot it up at the top, not just at the scroll. That's it. Well done. Can you um, sort of soften your knuckles a bit more? Yeah, that, no, exactly. Good. <laughs>
cut because they've got to have enough bow to do the minim. But I would not recommend that you do the up bow accents until really late in the book for review. So you never be that yeah, so you must teach working your way to the tip during the first six beats because otherwise they don't have enough length of bow for the minim. But you don't need to teach the up bow accents until much later in review. So do work your way to the tip by the E minim. That's what you need to write down, Claire. Do work your way to the tip by the minims, but don't work on the up bow accents until they are in review. Um, where you start in this piece is sort of a bit... Mm, no, I'm just going to change that. <laughs> I think on the photos, if you have a look at your photos, it says start in the middle. But actually thinking about it, that doesn't make perfect sense, does it? Because they're going to go to the balance point on the up bow minims every other time. So you may as well start at the balance point, um, even though it makes the very first time easier to start in the middle. So start at the balance point, and then it's the same bow distribution each phrase. If you want to put your coloured lines in to show the structure, that's very helpful. I think the first two lines and the last line should be the same colour, and then you can use a different shape at the end like this. So straight all the way along, or and then um, wiggly at the end for the second option. Do I just have a look at that instead of finding the picture? Um, I thought you had a very good picture, that's all. Yep. See what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Um, and for most kids, they learn this very quickly. Uh, the fours and the opens are a bit of a um, challenge. Remembering when to play four and when to play open is also a challenge. And for me, the fingering I want to do in line three is bar 11 with a fourth finger, but bar 12 with an open string. because then all the way through you can think it goes four, then it goes open. So, do do four, do do do, do do do, do do do, A, do do do, do do do, do 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 four, do do do, do do do, do do do, A, do do do, do do do, do, and the same pattern continues. So your tick boxes are fours and opens. Bow distribution. Up bow accents in review. Mobile left elbow. And when you do teach the upper accents, you need the, the pinch of the right hand and the speed. And we're just going to spend two minutes on that now. Uh, and don't ignore the last line on the page which says, also play Andantino starting on the G string. Which means you can also play it with the cellos, which is very nice if you're in a play together. What are the practice boxes for this piece? So I don't really have any, actually. Um, there might be a bit that a child is just doing... Uh, finding tricky for some inexplicable reason um, and in review you would want to put you know the, the first two bars in for the accent up bow but the first time they learn it through they tend to just be able to do it maybe the fourth finger in bar 11 depends how good their fours are okay so when you finish doing your notes two minutes on up bow accents and then it's lunch time
So obviously we're going to start from the beginning because you need to practice getting to the right place as well as getting the up bow. So no fingers. Stop, are you in the right place to start your up bow accent? Ready? So starting at the balance point. Ready, and. lots of things to organize in your right hand and arm yeah so they, if they're going to do it well rather than which is what you'll hear a lot yeah you need to really have the as th this is fast and with a pinch and then this is slow without the pinch so just find the top Make sure that you've got good contact with the string, it's a bit sticky, just find that sound. Yeah, okay, ready, go. Good, ready, go. Excellent, let's just do a couple on my turn, your turn. Great, can, really good pinch, can you get the speed a little bit faster, just sort your bow hold that.